Welcome back, Hampshire chemistry students. Today's video is all about gas laws. We're gonna be taking a look at a couple of different demos together and helping us better understand and learn chemistry. Did someone say learning? Well, Slowbot's still here, so I know it's gonna be a good time. So, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of our basics of our gas laws. Okay, you, we're gonna be learning about three of them today. They are Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's laws. We're gonna talk about their equations and how they all come together. We are gonna need something to write on with, as well as ideally a couple of colors to take some notes. So, let's get started together. We've got, our first setup is just a couple of basics and some reminders of some things. So, when we talk about pressure, remember that that is a force over an area, okay? And that we have some very common units for pressure. So those would be things like our atmospheres. Now we have some NMHG. This stands for millimeters of mercury. HG is the symbol for mercury on the periodic table. This is like an old school thing from weather where you'd have mer uh, mercury moving up and down. And then something called KPA. Those are called kilopascal. That's named after a scientist. So one atmosphere, remember, is about Earth's atmosphere, like what you should be experiencing right now, unless you're on top of a mountain or deep down in the bottom of a cave. And that is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, and that's equal to 101.3. So it's like one foot equals 12 inches. Same, the same length, different units. When we talk about volume, remember we're talking about how much space something takes up. So here we're talking about things like liters, milliliters, and centimeters cubed. A uh, reminder that we have one liter will always be 1,000 milliliters, and one centimeter cubed will equal one milliliter. And our final thing is temperature. And we know about temperature, how it's the average kinetic energy of what you're studying. Okay? But we are looking at our example here, we do not use Celsius when you're talking about gas laws. You'll see why when we look at some of those equations later, we instead use something called Kelvin. A Kelvin is very, very useful because it is an absolute scale, meaning that it can only go down to zero. Where I come from, we have negative Kelvins. Ha <laughs> slow bot. That's impossible. Okay. What is possible, though, is it's able to, we can calculate Celsius, our Kelvin temperatures very simply. You just take whatever your Celsius is and you add 273. So looking at all of these things, we can help us. That's not what I wanted to do. We can look and understand uh, we need some kind of standard to compare to. And that's what the idea of standard temperature and pressure, or STP, comes into play. Okay. STP is what is represented when you have one atmosphere of pressure or, and at the same time you have, you're at zero degrees Celsius, better known as 273 Kelvin when we're talking about gas laws. So if a scientist says, I'm doing an experiment at STP, all the other scientists who are reading about that can understand that better. So you can use this as a comparison and you'll see it very often in science. Now, what you're gonna be doing, uh, what we're gonna look at now is let's, we're gonna take a look at a couple different demos. Let's look at the first one with some marshmallows and a syringe. What we saw there was that our marshmallows started off nice and happy when the syringe was pulled back. Remember that there are gas molecules inside of that syringe. Okay. Remember that as we're going into high school, we are talking not just about what we see happening, but what we can understand as happening on the molecular level. So these gas molecules, they are whooshing around inside, right? Remember they're bouncing back and forth constantly. That is what is creating some pressure. But when I have them squeezed down, right? Because what I did in that scenario is I lowered the volume of my syringe. I squeezed it in. So here, D 
decrease my volume. Okay. Let's say that I took it from 200 milliliters down to, I don't know, 50 milliliters. Okay. And what that did is we saw that the marshmallow, the, the marshmallows were affected, right? Because those same gas molecules are still squeezed in here. And they, we saw our marshmallows get wrinkly, like they were really old. And that's because the pressure was increasing. So when I decrease my volume, I increase my pressure. Okay, let's say that, hey, the, the volume went down by a factor of four, so I would expect that the pressure, if it's gonna increase, would also increase by a factor of four. So it would go from like one ATM to four ATM. Okay. And then our last step here, I have temperature. Now I didn't heat it up or cool it down or anything, so what that tells me is that the temperature was constant during this setup, okay? So constant temperature when we're dealing with pressure and volume changes. This is Boyle's law, where we see a change between pressure and volume. With Boyle's law, we do need some kind of equation to represent what it means. And you can see here we have our equation written out. It's, and notice that there's P's and D's on both sides, but they have different little numbers. And if you see number like ones, that's going to mean before our change took place. So that would be our syringe before I did the plunger, and the twos would be after. So I would expect to be seeing, like, uh, as the plunger was pushed in, that would be our after point, and I would measure the pressure and the volumes to insert into our equation. Notice that when you're in a scenario like this, T is constant, okay? We call a kind of, re a kind of relationship like this, this is an indirect relationship. What that means is that if I have an increase in one of my things, like if my pressure increases, that means that my volume will do the indirect, the opposite of it. And the volume will decrease. And then the same thing that if I had a different scenario where my pressure decreased, my volume would do the opposite. It would increase. You can also represent this graphically with a line that has a negative slope because volume is high, pressure is low, and vice versa. So let's take a look at our next demo. favorites, okay, where we have on the left side, we can start with our balloon that is full of some water. That water starts off pretty toasty. So remember what that means is that my gas molecules are going to be going very, very fast inside of this container. And we saw that when they were still on there, right, as you heated up that balloon, that balloon started to expand and take up a bunch of space, just like a hot air balloon. Hey, but as you cooled down that balloon, right, we saw that that balloon got sucked into the container that it was into the flask. So now those same gas molecules are very close together and have been squeezed down into a much smaller volume. So let's think about what changed here. Okay. What, I, we, what I directly changed was my temperature, right? We lowered, we decreased the temperature. And what we saw change was that the volume the balloon took up also decreased. It went from full to closed. So that means that the pressure is constant. That was actually correct, Slobot. Good job. That means that our pressure was constant. 
okay? This happens because the balloon's size is changing. So even when it's they're squeezed together, they're going slower because they're colder. Hey, let's imagine that we lowered it down to room temperature about 20 degrees Celsius. So I would expect my volume to also decrease by a factor of four. And my pressure, I'm going to assume, is going to stay constant. So that is Charles' law. The equation for Charles' law involves volume and temperature. Notice that this time we have volume over temperature and volume over temperature on the left and the right as well. In this case, our pressure is our constant value. And these guys are going to have a direct relationship, meaning that if one of them increases, the other will increase as well. And the same will go for the opposite. If one of them decreases, the other decreases. So I would represent this with a line with a positive slope, both of them increasing together. See what happened there? Great, Slovak. Uh, we have we had a quarter sitting on top of a flask. Hey, initially, it's just kind of sitting there. It's holding up and it's hanging on. I did put a little bit of water on it to make sure it was sealed. Hey, but what we saw is we saw a, just a little tiny bit of gas escaping from our container. Right, because what's happening here is we do have gas molecules inside of our flask. And by placing our hands around them, what that's doing is it's increasing the temperature, meaning that their kinetic energy is increasing. So they are much faster, so fast they want to get out of that flask and make a tiny little burp. Okay? So let's think about what happened here. I had my, my temperature increase. Let's say it went up to the human body temperature of around, I don't know, uh, 40, 40 degrees. Okay. That might not be the human body temperature, whatever. Okay. The flask itself stayed exactly the same size. So here is where we had our constant. And since we saw that coin pop up, that tells us that the pressure inside was building and it increased while at the same time as our temperature. So if we doubled our temperature, that means we also would have doubled our pressure. But our volume this time is our constant. Hello, smart board. It stays at 500. I don't know what's going on there. So lastly, We've got our equation, okay? Same as, very similar to Charles' law. This is Gay-Lussac's law, okay? In this situation, we have pressure over temperature and our V is constant. We have another direct relationship, so it is increasing. My board seems to be fighting me here, that's okay. So, boop, summaries. We have all of our equations up here on the board. All get Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Gay-Lussac's. Look out for those constants. They are what's going to help us better set up our equations. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep learning, everyone.